articles may not be exchanged. We are forgetting how to give presents. Violation of the exchange principle has something nonsensical and implausible about it. Here and there, even children eye the giver suspiciously, as if the gift were merely a trick to sell them brushes or soap. Instead, we have charity, administered beneficence, the planned plastering over of society's visible sores. In its organized operations, there is no longer room for human impulses. Indeed, the gift is necessarily accompanied by humiliation through its distribution, its just allocation, in short, through treatment of the recipient as an object. Even private giving of presents has degenerated to a social function, exercised with rational bad grace. Careful adherence to the prescribed budget, skeptical appraisal of the other and the least possible effort. Real giving had its joy in imagining the joy of the receiver. It means choosing, expending time, going out of one's way, thinking of the other as a subject, the opposite of distraction. Just this hardly anyone is now able to do. At the best, they give what they would have liked themselves, only a few degrees worse. The decay of giving is mirrored in the distressing invention of gift articles, based on the assumption that one does not know what to give because one really does not want to. This merchandise is unrelated, like its buyers. It was a drug in the market from the first day. Likewise, the right to exchange the article, which signifies to the recipient, take this, it's all yours, do what you like with it. If you don't want it, that's all the same to me. Get something else instead. Moreover, by comparison with the embarrassment caused by ordinary presence, this pure fungibility represents the more human alternative, because it at least allows the receiver to give himself a present which is admittedly in absolute contradiction to the gift. Beside the greater abundance of goods within reach, even of the poor, the decline of present giving might seem immaterial. Reflection on its, sentimenta- on it, reflection on its sentimental. However, even amidst superfluity, the gifts were superfluous. And this is a lie, privately as much as socially, for there is no one today for whom imagination could not discover what would delight him utterly. People who no longer gave would still be in need of giving. In them wither the irreplaceable faculties which cannot flourish in the isolated cell of pure inwardness, but only in live contact with the warmth of things. A chill descends on all they do, the kind words that remains unspoken, the consideration unexercised. This chill finally recoils on those from whom it emanates. Every undistorted relationship, perhaps indeed the conciliation that is part of organic life itself, is a gift. He who through consequential logic becomes incapable of it, makes himself a thing and freezes.